and welcome to the I Shall Bloom show. Today we will be interviewing the favorable, focused, and driven Dr. Bobby Blunt. Dr. Blunt is an engineer at the Mitra Corporation, and he's also a president and director of several local vital corporations. He's a loving and best father, and he has the nickname Soccer Dad. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Bobby Blunt. Please help me welcome Mr. Bobby Blunt. Good Hello. day to you. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Uh, I heard a lot about you. I got all my notes. Um, I wanted to see if you can just, you know, tell me a little bit about uh, yourself. And I mean, you do a lot. You have a heavy load, but you just look so, you make it look so smooth. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, you know, I, I say, and some people can be tired of me saying this, you know, I say we all got 24 hours and just yeah. how we use it. So, right. you know, I've been fortunate to some degree because of uh, how I was raised and how I sort of been able to have a vision on, you know, how I can help out in the community and other aspects and, and, and having that opportunity to do that. So. You know, I basically was uh, raised up in a, a military family. Yes. So I was a, a brat. You know, yeah. My family is originally from Dayton, Ohio, by the way, and wow. joined the military. So, you know, I've had that experience of living in a lot of different places and yes. had a lot of different challenges. But my uh, my mom and dad were very hardworking folks. And my dad was very, I think I was busy. My dad was very involved in the community with things he was doing. I, went along with him and just sort of, you know, over the years, you sort of picked that up. So between wow. that and want to be a good model for my kids. That know, that's beautiful. what it's about. Yes, that's beautiful when we watch our family. Okay. See, that is, it's, it's paramount, you know, um, and I really don't want to go there, but I am going to go no, there go because yeah. uh, in the neighborhood we see, you know, people think it's just easy. I'm going to break up. You know, I don't get yeah. along with your mom. I don't get along with your dad, but these the kids. Yeah. And so sometimes we have to forget about ourselves and our selfishness yeah. and we, you know, and get past that and let the kids see a household where there are two that's working it out. You know what I mean? Because everything's not perfect. We know that. Yeah. And it's not, you know, it's interesting because, um, you know, I'll say from my dad's side for just a second, you know, sure. I watched him go through a lot of struggles and he sort of had those opportunities where there have been reasons for him to maybe give up or leave the family, et cetera. But, you know, he, de he definitely stuck it out. And a lot of times what we forget is, you know, from an African-American male standpoint, yeah. You know, oh. they're trying to live for the family and, uh, you know, the, the things that they had to face and mm -hmm. the challenges that they face. Uh, yes. You know, it, it was rough. That's same thing for on our woman's side of the house. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, they stuck it out and that, that meant a lot. It yeah. really helped out me and my sister. Yes. And that's just oh, it's just a blessing just to yeah. see you in the positions that you have. You have several high level positions and congratulations on your win on May 6th. Congratulations. Again. So. Yeah, that was uh, that was something else. You know, yes. I was, uh, you know, I've been on the school board now for um, 24 years. 24 years. So I've wow. been through five. Uh, sometimes I went unopposed, but and when a couple other times I had one. This is the first time I had six individuals uh, running against me. Right. And just a lot had changed in terms of how school board elections and other things occur. But you know, I tell you what, the community, you know, the deltas and. Some from my, my academy days and some that I hadn't heard from a long time. They came in and said, hey, it's important that you continue that position and, yes. and came in and support. So, oh, so I was wow. very fortunate. That's awesome. Thank you. So tell me more about the fund. I know that you are mm. part of the San Antonio African-American. Yeah, you got to get four A's in there. Four A's. <laughs> <laughs> everybody said, we wonder why. You know, at A's. first, oh, this is a great name. It throws everybody get an A. So yeah, it's so. San Antonio area, African area. American African. community fund. fund. And right. what does that entail? Like, what Yeah, that? you know, it's it's interesting. Um, when Reggie Williams um, was in charge, makes my way, in charge of the San Antonio Area Foundation, uh, what he had realized is that the full community, uh, the majority of the community, wasn't part of that giving type opportunities, wow. both in terms of giving back to the community or having a resource that they could give to. Yes. So he had this idea of starting the outreach funds. And uh, oh. the, the, uh, then it was the uh, um, now it's that next fund was the first one. They started 2007. Uh, we started a year later as the African American Community Fund. And what oh. he did is he, he put together what he thought was sort of the leaders that really didn't know each other. Some did in San Antonio. Yeah. You know, I had sort of the education piece, 
we had Floyd, which had the banking piece. You yes. know, we all had sort of different elements, and yes. he put us all together. And he sort of said, hey, it's up to you all. You can help out the community. You can use us as a sort of a uh, overall umbrella, but how can you best help the community? That is awesome. So that's how we sort of put together the fund. But it, it's been it, it's been tremendous. I mean, uh, just let me give you a quick example. Sure. As a matter of fact, it was something yes. I had earlier today. Um, so we're going to have, we picked up a couple of programs. Uh, one was in partnership with the YMCA, uh, San Antonio Rising Stars, wow. uh, 100 Black Men, oh, and yeah. West Care. Yes. And we started and brought back, you know, be careful with trademark reasons. Yes. It was called Midnight Basketball Program. Now we call it Community Basketball Program. Community. And mm-hmm. we're taking these kids, or kids, my way of saying it, I'm yes. sorry. Yes. You know, no, I 17 to about 25, mm-hmm. yes. who normally may be combating each other. Mm-hmm. And we put them rally together on teams, different parts uh-huh. of the city, different ones had different, and they're playing basketball together. together so every, yeah. every Friday and Saturday at the YMCA and the Joe Lewis Center, we've uh-huh. got them collaborating. And not only are they playing basketball together, but in addition, what we're doing is trying to give them education opportunities, showing them how you can get jobs. And yes. we got people going forward to say, hey, here, I've got some opportunities for you. So Bye. one thing we're doing, uh, we've got another one called the Juvenile Justice Jeopardy Program to help out with some of this friction that is occurring between the community, especially our youth yes. and the police departments, in particular the San Antonio Police Department. So oh, yes. on May 31st, we're actually going to have a kickoff, an announcement of this gaming program that's nationally known uh, that we're going to bring to San Antonio and train oh. the police department and law enforcement how to work with our students. So oh, that's, that's nice. That's, that's some needed. of the things under our social justice fund that we're wow. doing. So it's, it's, it's been great. I mean, we still wow. give out our grants program. Uh, we're still giving awards of, of funding. I yes. say grants. Grants can have a different meaning, but we provide funding for nonprofits yeah. uh, that are having an impact that nobody else knows about. So it's the grassroots organizations in our community oh, I love that it. we're providing funding to. Yes. I mean, from, from, from the churches mm-hmm. uh, to our sororities and fraternities to the small small businesses, et cetera. Uh, we go out and raise funds through our big event, which I'm sure we'll talk about, yes. that we're able to, uh, to to give them funding to, to continue their operation and have a big impact in the community. So just, just an example of some of the wow. little things we're doing. Just the little things he says. <laughs> wow. I, I mean, I'm just like, my mouth is just wide open and just mm-hmm. like, um, I didn't know you. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you. And it's just a blessing just to even for you to be here and, you know, the people that's going to see this, you know, to say, hey. You know, we have someone we can look up to yeah. that we can strive and be there too. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. And I tell you this, I'm with you on that. But to me, it's more about I'd rather have them see the impact I've had than yes. know who I am. Yes, that's true. So it's yes. great to have these things going on, but unless we make improvements and have that's something true. really impactful within the community, oh, to me, that's that. more important. It's yes. more important of the works. Yes. But I'm with you. Yes, but we need to else. see you too. Like, hey, <laughs> okay, that's hey, funny. you know, yeah. he's doing this. Yeah. You know, once we see you. Yeah. We watch, you know, people are people watchers, you know, uh-huh. and it's just like we're so used to seeing people say, talk, yep. talk yep. Yep. and talk. Yep. You know what I mean? But you are walking and walking yep. and running and running and walking. I mean, you're doing it all. And it's just that we want to see you more. We want to see more like you and we can be that, yep. you know, you you are like, so, you know, it's like I can do this. You know what I mean? So I'm seeing the like the little kids that's watching what that will see this show right. and grown ups. This is like, oh, okay, I have something to look forward to. You know what I mean? So it's even yeah. giving me I'm shy, all this, I'm sweating and everything <laughs> else. But just listening to all the things that you have going on under your umbrella. You know, it's yeah. interesting you say that. There's there's another value to um for those of us that have this opportunity, it really is an opportunity to it's make sure we're engaged and be so, seen because mm-hmm. that's how you also get input. Yes. You know, just for example, I was telling you about that juvenile justice program and the other one, you know, San Antonio Rising Star, Charles Satterwhite, is extremely known and really involved in the community and working with yes. youth and other ones. Mm-hmm. But just because we crossed paths, he saw me somewhere, et cetera, we got to talking and that's where we began this collaboration. So See? for me to have an impact, you know, mm-hmm. um, this, it, that's how it really proves to be valuable in yeah. that regard by being known or letting others see what you're doing. So, so no disagreement with you, but for yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. We both we we, we came together. together. Oh, we came <laughs> together. Um, so, tell me about your family. I know that they are just they're you're probably saying, oh, he's just my dad. Yeah, you know what I mean, it. like yeah. my dad. But you yeah. are involved in you were involved with their soccer. Yeah. I mean, you were like soccer dad and yeah, you, you, major dad, huh? Yeah, you know it, what I mean? Yeah, it's interesting <laughs> story on the, the soccer piece. It's so interesting. Um, we weren't be recording, I'll tell you the full story. Oh. I'll, I'll sneak it out anyway. 
you know, and then I, and I answer your question sure. and about my kids. But, you know, it's interesting. Right now, um, I run a soccer league. Uh, yes. man, I'm on a soccer field seven days a week. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't grow up playing soccer. Oh. I was a football player. Football. A little bit of basketball. I really played football. But when my child, my son started playing, he went to play when he was like four. Wow. And he had this coach that, he's four years old, and he didn't get any playing time. And I'm asking the coach, and said, hey, how come my kid's not playing? Right. He said, well, he's not ready yet. I said, he's four years old. Right. <laughs> you know. Wow. So I, so I said, I, so I just said the next season, I got this. <laughs> so I became the, I came to coach uh, yeah. and, and got some other players. But now what I'm actually doing is I run a soccer league called the Northside Soccer League. It yes. has 1,100 kids. Wow. Every Saturday morning, yes. I'm running this whole thing, just me and one other person with 1,100 kids, wow. et cetera. Then I actually coach um, three soccer teams. I have a high school team that I've had for eight years, yes. and we played at the highest level in the state and other things. So I show up, they say, well, who in the world is this? Yeah. Know, so, hey, man, I'm just, just trying to get by a little bit and <laughs> right, you know, have yeah. a little success with my team, et cetera. So, <laughs> so that's wow. sort of the, you know, the, the, the bit on the <laughs> soccer side. But, yeah, yeah. I, but to answer the other question, I'm, I'm very, very proud of my kids. My, yeah. Yeah, my son, um, he's done extremely well. He said he's up in New York now, but he... Uh, he was a uh, salutatorian at a uh, magnet school called Communications Arts. He had about a 102.7 GPA. Oh. Went to Stanford, got his master's yeah. and bachelor's in five years, which wow. is you know, was real fortunate. Mm-hmm. And then my doctor, yeah, he's, so he's an engineer. I mean, my daughter's she's an actress. She yes. does all kinds of acting and modeling and other type things yes. and uh, is very successful. Yeah, she does a number of commercials. She's done about every... The H-E-B, uh, wow. Taco Cabana, you know, it's always a, you know, it's the awesome. background, yeah, it's the background scene, yeah. it ain't the main stuff, not paying all the bills, yeah, but, uh, but so she's, she's but very she fortunate it. too, and then, yes. and then of course with my wife, she just, she fully supports everything I've been doing, yes. so, yeah, because yeah. so you know that saying, yeah. behind, oh, yeah. huh, <laughs> wouldn't make it otherwise, yeah, yeah. behind every black man, powerful black man, there's yeah. a strong woman that yeah. has to run that household and yeah. run you know, and work. And more, and, and more. Yeah, and help out yeah. with that community stuff, help too. Out, so. Yes. Yeah. And so that's what it's all about. So being a servant. Yeah. You know, and I know when we met uh, in the hallway, I was like, I met you before. Yeah. But our spirits have because right. um, Christian people who have a belief in God. Yeah. You know, it merges. Yep. You know them. Oh, yeah. And so tell me a bit, a little bit about your faith and your beliefs and um, growing up, I guess, in a household with parents oh, yeah. that... No, no. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that you you had to go to church. You were in church? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we did. Yeah. You know, being in the military, went to, you know, a lot of different type of churches. Yeah. You know, literally, et cetera. <laughs> so, you know, no, no, there's no doubt. You know, I definitely have very strong beliefs in God. And, yeah. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, there's no way I can make it uh, without uh, God's support, et cetera. Yeah. And, you know, I don't try to hide that or anything else. Mm, right. And I think... Um, you know, when you sort of get down a little bit and uh, you need your spirits sort of lifted, you know, I know where to turn to, to make that happen. Yeah, so, that's yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. Yes, I just wanted to bring that part out because yeah. that's number one. That's paramount. So um, let's see. What are, what are your plans? What do you have in store for us? What's your plans for 2023? Yeah, you know, a uh, couple, couple of things, um, mainly on the, well, I'll do the education side and the uh, African-American community side of the house. Sure. Um, so, so I'm fortunate right now, I'm actually president of um, what's called the Bear County School Board Coalition. So yes. um, that's an organization that consists of all the board of trustees in the uh, San Antonio area, mm-hmm. the 20 president. ISDs, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're president of that. So uh, yeah. when we're advocating or when somebody needs to know, hey, what do trustees think? Or um, if we need to come up with something that presents sort of a state viewpoint on something that may happen from the governor or other type of office that impact education, sure. uh, they tend to come to us first in San Antonio because we can collaborate together. And that's the organization that we do it to. Uh, service president of something else called Go Public, and that's the one that's advocating for public schools. Uh, okay, Go Public. Uh, yeah, Go Public. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so that particular organization has been extremely powerful across the state, and it's actually sort of seen as a national model on, you know, yeah. not only how to advocate for public education, but to really how to make it successful, how to get information out to parents. So we take yeah. it the next step and further. And then also I'm serving as president of the uh, Texas Caucus of Black School Board Members. So that gives me the, the statewide angle of addressing uh, challenges that we face. You know, Houston, Austin, Dallas, the Valley, uh, out far east, far west, wherever it may be, we get together with our African-American trustees and uh, you know, we'll advocate, figure out what we need to do. We have a big summit. We do a lot of training. Yes. Because a lot of board members are literally by themselves. Yes. You know, I'm sort of the only African-American on my board. 
That's true. We're a lot of African-American boards, so it's a different set of challenges. So we teach African-American trustees how to handle that situation, oh. you know, how to advocate for an agenda yeah. that you need to get through that, that you may have a little friction on, et cetera. So we provide those top opportunities, too. So that's, those are some of the, the major activities from the, uh, uh, the education side of the house. Sure. And then from the, the, the African-American Community Fund, you know, really, we did a report of the status of African-Americans in San Antonio. And uh, this is a partnership with the San Antonio Area Foundation. And there's also 20 organizations that were part of it. And that report uh, took us about a year and a half or two years. And wow. it gives you every education, economic, business, a very thorough report that, that we have, have produced. Now we produce that report, it's like, you know, you can imagine what the data look like, the statistics, you know that's through sure. already. So now we're at the point of, okay, how do we change that? Yeah. So we're trying to work with as much community, trying to advocate, talk. We did something with the Deltas on the education side of the house, uh, having to do with discipline. And um, in that particular case, uh, it was really focused on young African-American girls and how yes. the uh, discipline problems are being faced and why that's being faced. And we did a collaboration with them to say, hey, what can we do about it, et cetera. So I want to do more of those types of activities. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And you said the 100 black men as well. Oh, yeah. No, we, we work with everybody. Yeah. Yeah, we, oh, yeah. Anybody that wants to work with us is going to have an impact in the community, uh, oh, yeah. et cetera. So, yeah. Oh, cool. well, we just, I mean, I just say thank you. I applaud you for everything that you do and yeah. the hats and the 24 hours. 24 hours and 24 all the hours. things. But God can make a way. Right. Well, he will make a way, yeah. you know, as long as you're doing his will. So um, anything else that you want to add? I know I, um, let's see. I ask everything, you know, so um, for 2023, I just, you know, I just keep doing what you're doing. You have any, any other yeah, thoughts? Or yeah, no, I, yeah, I do. You know, um, I encourage you and everybody else um, to work as effectively as you can in your swim lane and figure out what that is. Because a lot of time when you're talking earlier about you know, it's important to vote, it's important to do other things. But mm -hmm. to me, you got to do a lot more than that. So if you're in whatever profession or whatever your community involvement is, yes, yes. if you can just take a look at how I can make that the very best to help out in our community yes, and take sure. care of yours, then everything else will take care of itself. Okay. So I always try to encourage everybody to just do as much as you can in the area that you know well yes. and that you can be successful at. Yes. And it, it sort of carries through with everything else. So that's the other message I would send out. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. that helps because sometimes we just feel like we got, we have to do everything. And I know I have that energy. I don't know yeah. where I have the energy. Oh, I can do this. You know, I can. But I can't. Yeah. So, know, like, so. so like what you're doing now. So what you like your interviewing students right now, you've done a very good job. Mm -hmm. um, but every guest that you have, per se, Try to figure out something that it not only carry that guest to and get them thinking a little bit more. Yes. But I'm, I know you do this part, but also what is how can your audience get value out of that? And then you're working yes. in your swim lane that you have right now yes. to really help out in the community. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because it's all about helping, helping. That's the hard, that's why we're here, yep. you know, so to help someone else. So um, I just want to say thank yeah. you for giving me my first chance, yeah. you know. And I know I'll see you again because I know I'm going to sign up for something. Maybe, well, not the dancing. Probably not the oh, dancing. But well, we just talk, Can we talk about that? Yeah, we can talk we about can the talk dancing. About that. That's yes. right. Yeah, you got to talk see? about that. Yeah, one. yeah. Uh-oh. Right. Uh-oh. So here we go. Look. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So every year, uh -huh. 2009, mm -hmm. our San Antonio Area African American Community Fund has had our annual fundraiser. It's called Renaissance with the Stars. Yeah. And that's the big Dancing with the Stars competition that we have. In, in the, San Antonio. In, yeah, in San Antonio, in the Tova Center. And we take, the just like, <laughs> not, not, no trademark issues on that one. Oh, but yeah. just like the show, <laughs> all right, we're going to take um, uh, the celebrities. Yeah. And it's going to be a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. All right, you know, celebrities, yeah. and we match them up with the dance studio. And this dance studio is very good. It's called Simonea. We've right. used some others, but they are, they are very good. Okay. And they're very serious. And they'll start, they've already started their practicing, our events in August. They'll start practicing around March or so. Yeah. And uh, they're dancing, but it's also our major fundraising, et cetera. Yeah. So they've got to go out and raise funds prior to the event. That plays into right. who the winner is. But then they've got to get their dance routine and everything else down. So this year, that's going to be on August 12th. But you want to have, and we also present like the best, uh, just entertainment that we can find in San Antonio. And that varies every year on how we do that. Okay. One year we had, 
We had the Soul Train line going last oh, year. Oh, so you probably weren't born. You know what the Soul Train line? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my bad. No, <laughs> oh. I, no, Google it. Look, anyway, well, you know. y'all got to Google that. Uh, Soul Train. We had that. We had it. Soul Train. No. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. You got it. Oh, you good? <laughs> with, with, yeah, that's entertainment. Uh, yeah. We had a talent competition one year. One yeah. year we brought in the very best of the band. So in addition to that dancing competition with our at least six or seven dancers, we, we do other things too. But anyway, so that's August 12th, but that's our big, you got to be there. Yes. At, be that, there. That's the event to be at. August 12th, you guys, I'll yeah, be August there. August 12th. Yes. Yeah. So anything else? Um, so what do you do for your personal time? Like uh, Me? Uh, well, I, besides, I, used to, I was a powerlifting champion, so I, um, I still uh, lift weights. I can't compete anymore. Got too many injuries from those days, but, oh. you know, I do. That's what I do. You know. So how do you get rid of the back fat? <laughs> <laughs> that's in Texas. We didn't you, have, I didn't have back fat oh, in California. It's, so. whole, it's, it's just whole body workout. Oh. Okay. Just keep, keep at it. Yeah. Three days a week, about an hour and a half. It'll go. It'll go. It'll go. Just as long as you're doing it. No, it's oh. it. Because it's hard to isolate. No, we really went off the episode. <laughs> but it really is. It's, everybody wants to isolate, build an ab or whatever yeah, else. Just say, no, just build your, your whole rest. build your whole body in general. Yeah. And and that'll happen. The rest will carry through. But so yeah, so I still lift weights. Uh, see, but it's just this is a part of the show because we're see this is another side of you that they side. probably yeah, yeah, they right. probably didn't know that you were a power yeah, lifter. Right? Yeah, you know, it's uh I don't know how long we got, but uh it's interesting okay. because uh my power lifting actually taught me a lot. So even though I was fortunate, you know, they know the education side, the Air Force Academy, you know, mm, uh, wow. St. Mary's for my master's, and then went to George Mason for my, uh, you know, law degree. But I, I'd, I'd contend more than wow. anything else that my, when I was competing in powerlifting, yeah. people ain't going to believe this, but I probably learned more on what, how to handle pressure yeah. and how to overcome obstacles than anything else. Because I was competing nationally, and I used to drop I used to lose about 15 to 16 pounds to get down to weight class. You know, I'd go from about 163, depending on where I was at, down to 148 weight class. But to do that, I would lose eight pounds a day before. Wow. And I would sit in a sauna because you have to be careful how you do it. I would sit in a sauna for 12 hours prior. Wow. And uh, to be able to do that. So that's Dry what I'm saying. It's the discipline and everything else. And then you got to learn how, okay, yo, you are. And you are. And I'd be really Fantastic. dehydrated. And then, oh, yeah, everything else. Yeah. And I got to where... I know about 2 or 3 a.m. because when you do that, your body, after I go and weigh in, it takes a while before you can drink or eat anything. Uh -huh. So what I would do is about 2 or 3 a.m., I'd finally wake up and I'd be able to eat, drink, et cetera, and get as much of my, my weight back, et cetera. And uh -huh. then I would just have to, since you take your body through that, I'd have to push through because people don't realize probably the competitions all day that uh -huh. you're doing your different yeah. weight lifts, et cetera. Like you hit that wall yeah. and overcome it and keep on going. So. Wow. So happy. So anyway. you... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So, anything a uh, little, you like comedy or do you, you seem like you like to joke? And, yeah. You know, I said I was going to ask you that, huh? You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you a difference, but I used to go to all the comedy clubs with my weightlifting buddies in San Antonio. Yeah. But we, I had one that used to heckle. We used to get thrown out of a lot, but that's a different story. Uh, <laughs> well, when we, when you come back. When you okay. come back to the show, then I'll be, I'll, I'll probably have to be more trained and polished. No, no, you're good. You know, you're good. I'm be myself. Yeah, I'm yeah. always be myself. Yeah. And that's, you know what I mean? That's yeah. what, that's but, what it is. But so. you should have a show where you tell the audience who you are. Yeah. And maybe have I some know. interview. That'd I be know. a good one. I know. I'm next. Yeah. I'm next. So, with that, you guys, um, thank you so much, yeah. Mr. Blunt. Thanks, thanks that guys. That was yeah. awesome. I am. Um, I'm just blessed. I'm blessed. And it's just like, I'm a crier, so I'm not trying not to cry. <laughs> no, don't do that. Yeah, but I, I'm so blessed. And I thank you, um, Mr. Fisher, that's sitting yeah. over in the yeah. Thank you, too. But um, thank you, yeah. Mr. Blunt. And, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for your team. I appreciate being right. here. And um, how does someone reach you? Um, uh, I know. I'll, I'll give the phone number, 210. I don't oh. mind. 210-334-1320. Or Bobby Blunt, 22. At gmail.com is email. Doesn't matter when. Usually 24 hours, literally. So oh, okay. feel free to contact me to help out in any way. Oh, thank you. And then also, um, if you want to see the show again, it's going to be on YouTube. And you can just put in ishallbloom.com and also uh, subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks again. Bye now. <laughs>